Hi everyone and welcome to In Deep Geek Live. Welcome to Westworld Season 3. We made it. Um, this is the first of a series of pre-show live streams. Uh, I'm going to be doing them before every single uh, episode of the season, at the same time, 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, uh, each of the eight weeks. Uh, just a chance to chat through what happened previously and have a little think about what might be happening in the episode coming up. Each week I'm going to have some uh, some fantastic guests and I'm starting off with two of the very best. Uh, so uh, why don't we start uh, on our right on the right of the screen with uh, the legend that is Hacks Dogma. Do you want to say hi, Hacks? <laughs> Hey everybody, uh, Hacks Dogma here. First time with a webcam, so uh, you know, just be be gentle. Um, yeah, it's good to be back, Robert. I'm so glad that Westworld is here. Uh, I honestly cannot wait to talk about it, and I cannot wait for a couple more hours to go by so we can watch it. Excellent. And uh, in the middle, uh, sure, he needs no introductions, but for anyone who has been living under a rock and does not know uh, the wonder that is Justin Thomas. Justin, do you want to say hi? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me on, guys. Happy to be back in the saddle again and just pumped for Westworld Season 3. And of course, you can find me on Top Shelf Phantom. <laughs> Excellent. Both of these guys have got fantastic channels. Um, I'm not sure if I've linked to them yet down below, but I will do that the moment we finish. And I'm sure that the moderators will uh, drop the links into the chat if you are watching this live. OK, guys, well, let's start off with uh, just having a, a sort of a recap on where we are at, as I say. So what happened at the end of season two, and what we can kind of expect coming into season three. So um, I'll, I'll sort of kick off by very quickly giving an overview of where we're at with the main characters so that we, uh, we're, we're sort of all on the same page. Dolores and um, Bernard have escaped out into the real world. Uh, Dolores is there, she's got uh, five pearls or she brought five pearls out with her. She's created uh, a couple of hosts already, uh, but uh, she's out there um, as far as we can tell, to, to take the world for the hosts. That's what she's about. Bernard, she has recreated, and he is out there. He wants to stop her. So that's immediately going to be some sort of tension going on there. Maeve was shot at the end of season two, but we saw Felix and Sylvester saw her, and I'm sure she'll be back up and running again soon. But she's starting off, I suspect, in the park. Uh, William, the man in black, he was also... Uh, I was going to say a shot. His, his gun was backfired, backfired on him. Uh, Dolores uh, uh, did that uh, did that to him. And he was ended the season um, lying uh, there on the beach. Uh, I expect, again, we will see him um, emerge in, uh, in season two. There was that rather enigmatic like, final scene, uh, which we can go into if people are interested in, but I think that we're going to say that that was unless we hear otherwise, uh, that was in the far future. So that's not where he is at this precise moment in time. So that's that's where we're at. Those are the main characters. Justin, do you want to just sort of kick off with what we've heard so far about uh, some of the new characters that we might be uh, meeting in this series? Yeah. Right now, what we're dealing with is a heavy focus. Uh, he even got his own you know, focus in one of the first, very first trailers, which is kind of a very... Um, it's an interesting move for the show to uh, feature Caleb uh, so um, um, strongly right off the bat. So Caleb is uh, been described to us as a human. They have said he's a human in multiple interviews. That still means nothing. But uh, he supposedly <laughs> is a vet, um, which is very interesting because I wonder what war he was in and um, and how that has affected him. And especially since we've seen Delos QA, right? We, we've seen them there yet. So was there any, you know um android uh you know war bots in there or not uh, yeah. yeah and caleb is he's definitely somebody that is um going to empathize with dolores and it seems like vice versa so he is on the outskirts he doesn't fit in the society <laughs> and he feels like he is trapped he uh, does a construction job he has his own um like it's a it's it's like a earlier version of the host that he, I believe the robot's name is George that he has as a helper. Uh, so he you know again he's uh, got the you know empathy for for the AI and, and the, the non humanoids. So I think it's interesting that the Lord or know they're going to team and you guys is 
would Dolores right away go and team up with a human in any other way other than planning on eventually a means to hmm. an end with that human? Because that's not really from when we last saw Dolores. Uh, well, you know, well, should we get onto the speculation about the the series, what's going to happen uh, in a little bit? Are there any other <laughs> new characters that we need to be knowing about? Yeah, well, there's a lot of friends from Caleb. Uh, Marshawn Lynch, a uh, football player. You got Kid Cuddy. Uh, He's an American football player for oh, yeah. on my side of the world. <laughs> yeah. Home. You know, um, you have a, a few characters that are seemingly going to be working for Insight. Um, I'm blanking on the name right now, but he was in Sons of Anarchy. Um, you, of course, have Vincent Casal uh, mm -hmm. from uh, Ocean's fame. And uh, he is going to, I believe, play uh, the CEO or the owner of uh, Insight. So, yeah, you have a plethora of new characters, but the focuses, I think, are going to be on Caleb and probably Vincent Cassell will be the big bad. So there you go. Fantastic. And I think Zan, Vincent Cassell looks like he's probably going to be connected in some way, whether he's part of it or working against it uh, with the, the big organization that we're sort of being introduced to through all of the pre-publicity, which is Insight. Now, Hacks, I know you've done a video on... Uh, algorithmic determinism in the world of Westworld season three. Yeah, can you give us a sort of a head a headline overview of what is this world that we're going to see yeah. uh, in the outside world? Yeah. So what they've kind of built with the with this insights incorporated, um, it, it's this at least what we can speculate is this idea that. Um, you know, your life is predetermined, right? So, you know, we're deterministic beings and that's because um, potentially there's an augmentation in which you can, um, you know, sign up for and they will help your life. Uh, they will make it better. They will in some kind of way give you an advantage that other people don't have. Now, it's not exactly sure how um, there's, you know, with the CES event, it's kind of like, it's believed that there may be like an autopilot, you know, you enter this mode and it will essentially do what needs to be done for you to best live your life that day. And that's again, just speculation. Um, but it all builds to this idea that this organization is using algorithmic determinism as defined as simply, sorry, if you can hear the dogs in the background. That's not a problem. Yeah. <laughs> um, as simply um, determining things with algorithms, right? You know, it's uh, this idea that you can collect so much data on anything that you can then build it out for robots to process and animate, or I'm sorry, automate. Um, and we think that, you know, Insight is probably going to use that for, they may legitimately give you what leads you to your best life, but they'll probably also use it to um, shape the markets or build future technology for them or a plethora of anything from, you know, just simply monetary gain to enslaving people that now have augmented their bodies with things that are connecting to servers um, at Insight Global. Or, I'm sorry, at uh, uh, <laughs> Insight Incorporated. I worked for a company called Insight Global, oddly enough, so. <laughs> oh, really? You work for Insight? I guys. used to work for Insight, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not worrying. Yeah, all part of and, the And the, the other thing that, that the, uh, the pre-publicity seems to suggest is that uh, insight is it's not just about uh, all this kind of algorithmic determinism it's not just about a sort of a micro level for for your own life that is what seems to be going on but also there seems to be a sort of like a, a managing humanity as a whole there's there was the trailer that we saw when it seems to be implying that there was some kind of model that was trying to chart the path of humanity towards not having disasters uh, and resetting every now and then and then moving on. So we're talking here about all of the planet being run by sort of algorithms and all the rest of it rather than just individuals. <clears throat> you know, and to jump in real quick, if you don't mind. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, it, it brings up this whole morality of would we sign up for that? Because I think that's probably the more fascinating thing here is that if we could guarantee that our day is then spent doing the most efficient thing that would make us the most happiest at the end of the day, would we opt in to do that even if it wasn't us personally making those choices? Open-ended for either. Uh, uh, Justin? Yeah, well, the big thing is, would we sign up knowingly? 
Mm. Would we sign up with um, the full picture of the implications that this type of um, technology has? You know, again, even Alexa helping you pick where you're going to eat. It is still a, a decision you have made, not 100% on your own. You I, I have been put into an algorithm, which means they have to put you into a box, a loop, a category. They need to collect data. They need to make you, you know, conform and they need to put you in that area and not leave that area. So it doesn't really, um, it doesn't really do well for people that want to like, you know, have progress or, you know, make changes in their lives. It's a lot of complacency that that type of behavior and technology will lead to. So I don't think they'll, they'll look at it as, cause we don't look at it as something not, you know, of us losing our free will, but slowly yeah. it'll, it'll, you know, chop your legs off. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think, I think, for- yeah, for for me, it's it's taking what we've got in our current uh, world and sort of uh, pushing it forward exponentially. So so you you turn on Netflix and it suggests things for you based on what you've watched before. Or you go to Spotify, similarly, those kind of things happen. You you go to Amazon, your recommended books are based on what you've had before, and you find that increasingly your 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 tastes are being molded based on what your previous tastes have been and the opportunities for you to be experiencing different things to those are becoming more and more limited. And that I think is perhaps a feel of what we're, we're, we're going to see in this is that you get people who, yes, they might be doing and having things that they know they like, but that doesn't mean that they're going to have this richness of human life and experience that perhaps, um, uh, we might hope. And I think that this is one of the things that uh, Dolores will find is that the world and the freedom of the people within the world is not what she was expecting. I just, I, I'm going to pick up on that point in just one moment because I yeah. think that I saw Dolores, you were going to, uh, you, you said a couple of things in the, in the chat, Justin. I want to just pick up on that. But I do want to um, uh, say a very quick thank you to Maura Lee for doing a, a couple of super chats and a super sticker, actually, before we went live, uh, saying just a show of uh, love, admiration, and support for both of your channels uh, and a show of support for Hacks and Justin. Thank you, Robert, for inviting great guests on your channel. I do invite great guests, I have to say. Um, um, as, they're great rather than uh, than my choice of them. Uh, but uh, the, uh, the, the, I can't wait for the discussion episode one, loving the adventures of Alice in Wonderland on the well-told tale. So thank you very much for that, Maura. I really do appreciate that. Um, let's talk about uh, Dolores. And I, th- I think if we try and work our way through a few of these characters, perhaps. Um, Dolores clearly goes out there with a a vague plan at the very least that she wants to take the outside world for the hosts she wants to um uh, to battle them in some way uh, uh, bernard clearly thinks that she's going to kill all of the human the, the humans uh, what do you think her plan is justin well I, I think her plan has um probably drastically changed uh by the time that we even will see her i think that she is realized because it's interesting now it's technology making choices for us right in the first season it was can technology make choices and now it's just flipped on its head so now it's um a little bit more interesting because you have uh the general theme of not you know can ai be sentient or uh have sapience it's can AI, you know, take away our free will and so forth. So the humans and the AI look like they're going to be banding together. Like I said briefly uh, on my little rant at the beginning, uh, that's why you're the play-by-play guy. I'll just do the color. <laughs> um, you know, uh, that I don't think Dolores would have entered into any type of business relationship or any type of relationship with a human without expecting to, you know, he, there's a means to an end for it. Like once he's done his job, then, you know, a bullet or something happens. Cause I mean, the, the last time I saw Dolores, I'm just going to say she was acting a little bit perturbed, a little bit crazy. So, you know, like I, I think it's going to be a situation in which he's useful, beneficial. Uh, they have a lot of uh, shared uh, goals and um, motivations. So I think that, you know, she's going to come to find out that she does care about him uh, and maybe, you know, uh, he'll break her heart or she'll break his, but uh, yeah, I, I think it's going to be quite layered and I'm really looking forward to it because I love Aaron Paul. Yeah. Excellent. And then Hacks, what do you think? Do, do you think she's got a plan? Uh, I definitely think she has a plan. Uh, I think that 
you know, Hale as an asset is so critical. I mean, she is in the company. She is a board member of Delavis, right? So I think that f out of the out of the gate, that's their that's going to be their plan of attack. Um, I think that infiltration, corporate espionage is probably the, the, what they think is going, going to be the best way to go. Um, but I think it's going to fail, and I think it's going to fail immediately. Uh, I think that we're going to see, you know, uh, some kind of major plot. It's going to advance fast and then just crash and burn, subvert expectations. It doesn't work. Um, and I think that that is going to lead us to that scene that we see in the trailer in which we see a tattered Dolores, you know, coming out of this tunnel and finding Aaron Paul, you know, finding potentially what is going to show her the good in humanity or, you know, that maybe not all humans deserve to die. Um, and I think that like, you know, with that, that maybe like some of the scenes that we've seen in the trailer of like the, the riot control bots all happen super early. And then, you know, again, this, this idea that it's a, a build up. you know, she's super close and then crashes and burns relying on, on Aaron Paul to kind of make anything happen at that point. Could, could yeah. I, could I touch on something? Really yeah, go quick? ahead. So, I, I love how you said that she found Aaron Paul, uh, Caleb, right? Because mm -hmm. what doesn't it seem kind of uh, suspect that she needed help and he found her and his job, he works with the hosts, you know, at least hosts like uh, yeah. uh, Thomas Beans and so forth. So it's like, how, how likely is it that Dolores has, you know, suckered him in to this plot? I um, think it's entirely possible. Yeah. I mean, like the, the, uh, one of the hidden trailers on Insights website, um, you know, showed this like rom com. It was like, in comparison, it was wildly different. Um, and I think that. I speculated in, in my video that uh, that could be them showing us how Caleb is feeling. You know, it's this love thing. It's it's like, you know, she, he sees something in her that that is the equivalent of what William saw in her and is in love. Right. Is, is believes this entity to, to be in, in existence and to believe that it is um, not malicious. When in reality, Dolores could be using him to uh, her advantage uh, just because he has some kind of role or, you know, maybe was already kind of pushing against this insights, um, this insight company that threatens to, you know, make humans into data. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think, I mean, we'll just to round off that bit about Dolores. I think the only thing I would add to that, I agree completely uh, with what you're saying uh, a little bit ago, hacks about the, she will start out with this sort of grand plan of like, bringing everything down from the inside and that's not going to work in some way and she will get yeah she clearly gets badly hurt we've seen that Aaron Paul's character Caleb clearly comes to help her in some way they do get a bit close uh, so I think all of that I think that what happens after that my speculation based purely on the trailers is that then when she does get to understand a bit more about humans she then shifts to thinking about revolution and inciting revolution and i think perhaps some of this um that, that we see with that there were a few flashes of, of of riots and and things like that that is her actually saying you know what i'm gonna get on the side of these humans who are trapped in cages like i i was uh, and i that i i hope that's where it goes for yeah. her character development because otherwise she is just this merciless killing machine trying to kill humans and i think that what we saw at the end of season two was her starting to show that she could change yeah. um and i think that well, i hope that that will carry on into season three we did have a super chat while we were talking as well thank you so much uh, shadow dog production that's very kind saying what is your favorite season three theory uh, each of us. Um, Justin, have you got a particular favorite theory? That I am you, not uh, a big theory about? guy. I'm not a big theory guy. I have a little bit of a theory that uh, it, I, it, it is not going to happen, but it's the man in black, even though we see a host version of him, that doesn't necessarily mean that he is dead. It could just be a separate man in black host that we saw at the end of season two. Um, Cause we see him, we see him in the limbo time, the time in between, right? Cause that is uh, like, that's, that's, that's way down the road supposedly when we saw him at the, in the scene at the end of season two. So what, uh, what does he have to do to get into that situation this season? Like where, cause he's going to at least start walking towards that uh, direction. So I, I, I think it'd be interesting to have a host man in uh, black in the park and um, 
you know, kind of fighting his own creation, something like that. And I don't think this is going to happen. I'm not a big theory guy. Uh, but yeah, I don't, that's about that's about that, that and the Charlie one that um, it's possible that Charlotte Hale could be Charlie, um, a uh, creation uh, made off of the memories of uh, Bernard's son. Interesting. Don't uh, think they're going to happen. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, I like so a couple things I want to, to build off of that is that I like this idea that William is in prison. Um, you know, some of the shots that we've seen in the trailer is that he has like this garb that is, you know, a standard color, um, you know, very plain rooms, very industrial rooms. Uh, and then he's strapped to a chair and then something's drilled into the roof of his mouth. And my, my brain goes, OK, you know, this is that far future prison in which like, you know, humanities and and and, you know, rights given to prisoners is even less than it is now. And, you know, we can just force people to to you know, be drones inside of prisons because that's the easiest way to manage them. Um, you know, but essentially I like this idea that that William is scapegoated for uh, for his role and, you know, maybe lack, lack of uh, caution with running the park. He also killed his real life daughter and, you know, the QA staff. So if for whatever reason they can prove that, I think that that also aligns to uh, him becoming, uh, or, or him going to prison. I, I think the idea of two Bernards is also a, a favorite theory of mine. Um, and that's built on this idea of Bernard exists and was built um, from, from Dolores at the end of the season. And we're really going to have to see if he is fully awakened yet or, you know, what that journey is going to be like uh, having, having seen both Maeve's and Dolores's journey on camera be so, you know, so lengthy, such a, such a, triumphant process and now that bernard has been rebuilt not having not having been rebuilt with consciousness essentially you know i, I don't think they're saying that just yet um but we're gonna have to see something and that, i think that that's something that journey that he's gonna have to go on um you know he may cross paths with another bernard who was the the physical host that was left the physical host body that was left in the park um you know in in the forge when it flooded and I think that there's room there that maybe some some interesting things happen. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Isn't it so awkward when you run into the other host? You know, yeah. it's, I always go to the other side of the street. Just act like, yeah. you know, I'm on my phone. Could you imagine I, I, running across a version of yourself? Just like, what would you do? Uh, what, what would you say? What would you do? How would you know? I don't know. Hey, good looking. How you doing? Yeah. It, it, it'd be life most life likely life. in prison, so I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think that the prison idea in particular is, um, I think that makes so much sense because if you if you just take a step back, and they're all about uh, yes, it's sci-fi, but the, it's the the internal consistency has to be there for them. And when you think about what happened, was that there was a theme park? If you think of, in our world, if there were a theme park where suddenly dozens of people hundreds of people perhaps were killed that because the technology that was was developed for it went very very wrong this would be a massive news story this would be huge there would be calls for 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 people's heads uh, the whole thing delos itself would be immediately kind of like bankrupt and and and, and all the rest of it that i'm the bit I don't quite understand, and I will we'll come to Maeve in a moment, is how on earth is this still running if she is in the park? Uh, yeah. But the idea that William the Man in Black might have been uh, put in prison or hauled up for his crimes does work really well for me. Um, in terms of uh, my favourite theory, I haven't got any overarching theories yet, but one that I love based purely on one image from the trailers, which was uh, Dolores and Charlotte lying in bed, uh, sort of next to each other, sort of curled up. Uh, it spooning. looked it's they were spooning, and then it was it was very visually very very similar to her and Teddy just after Teddy killed himself, and so I love the idea that that is Teddy in there, and that she somehow managed to bring him forward because. Who would she bring with her people that she can trust? And that immediately opens up a huge amount of issues that when we're talking about being in, in hosts' bodies, we've already 
yes, it's one thing being in a different host's body, but then uh, Teddy is not only outside in the real world in something completely outside of everything he's understood. Dolores has been in the outside world, so she does to some degree understand how it operates. Teddy, no, not at all. And then he's finding himself in a woman's body. That, for me, is just, that would blow his mind. Oh. <laughs> so uh, it's, uh, it's uh, I'm sure at some point there will be some kind of uh, a male host in a female body or vice versa, mm -hmm. uh, because I it's just too obvious a plot point not to have. So that's my favourite sort of little random theory. It's not a meta one, but it's uh, it works quite uh, well. Um, but talking about uh, who might be in Charlotte Hale, Shade of the Evening, hi there, saying, uh, just saying hi and thank you. I'm just going to listen to the experts. Well, you're, you're listening to us. Uh, we've, we've certainly got at least two experts on here today, and they're the fine gentlemen there on your screen. Um, uh, the Would it be possible for Clementine to be in Hale, uh, considering uh, lobotomy? Um, well, this sounds like a technical question, and Hax is my technical go-to man. What, what do you reckon? Do you think, uh, obviously, everything's possible in the world of Westworld. Um, could it be Clementine in, uh, in Hale? Hmm. I think that Clementine would not be with Dolores' set, simply because... Um, you know, in terms of, like, that, that's the whole thing. It, it's sci-fi. It could literally be anything. It's magic, essentially. So um, it, it very well could be. But I also don't see a connection between Clementine and Dolores. Like, if it was Maeve that had these pearls, then, yeah, I could definitely see that because in a, in a large sense, Clementine and Maeve had a real bonding experience being um, at the Mariposa for all those years, you know. And regardless of, of you know, the story of her daughter, was one thing that was given to her, but you know she still experienced this this life with Clementine. And I think that you know um, that if it was Maeve that had those pearls, then very much that could be. Uh, I just I don't think it would be Clementine um, simply because there's there's no reason that Dolores would specifically want Clementine. I think. Yeah, and a couple of people in the chat are saying uh, maybe Angela. And I have to say, if I, if, yeah. if I were purely thinking from her from her pragmatic perspective. Who is it that she would most want by her side? Angela makes the most sense to start with. Fiercely loyal, uh, very effective, um, uh, and has been in the outside world. So um, yeah. all, ticking all of the boxes. So uh, that does make a huge amount of sense. Yeah, and she was blown up in the cradle, right? But I don't know. I, I With this, like we didn't expect we'd ever see Ford again at the end of season one, right? So I, I leave it very much on the table that, that Angela could be one of those pearls. Unless they have new characters come in and fill these host positions, we have to think, who are the characters that are on the table that have been characterized, that we we have a sense of who they are? Because you can't have characters, like, that's why Clementine is high up on the list for me, simply because she's one of the few characters available that I have an idea of what type of person she is. You know what I mean? Her behavior, her, uh, her uh, you know, uh, uh, her character. She's been characterized. You can't put somebody in there and be like, it's Steve. You know, like nobody knows who Steve is. You have to have somebody. Teddy does work uh, in a way, and it does seem like this Charlotte host is a child per se, right? Like yeah. they are learning, and Teddy would be a child in this world learning. Dolores would be uh, to uh, some extent. And I would just end cap that with, you know, one thing to get Maeve, because it's very odd, and I, I know I won't jump ahead too much, that Maeve is listening to somebody to go and just go kill Dolores, like, you know, mm -hmm. a human tells her to do something, yeah. she's going to do it. That doesn't sound like Maeve to me. But maybe she would if... uh Dolores had her daughter, uh, you know, because Clementine is very much a daughter to uh, Maeve throughout the season. So, you know, it would be, uh, yeah. again, and it has to be characters we know. That is simply what it has to be because it, you, you got to be able to know, like, why it's them and why it's important and identify them somehow. So if you don't know anything about them, it doesn't work. And I think it's probably worth also mentioning that they've, they've built in this idea that you, we, we don't need to all of the backup data for somebody because yeah. Del if Dolores remembers them, as with Bernard, that's what she did. She remembered him uh, all the way back to Arnold, recreating Arnold as Bernard. Uh, that's what it was from her memories. And so once we've got that established that that can happen, you open up the idea that um, uh, that there you could have any of the people that we've met already. Uh, talking of which, before we get on to the next character, um, uh, Justin, I was wondering whether you could just very briefly cover this potential for a five-year gap. Now, 
Uh, we, we've been told that we're gonna it's gonna follow on, so we're not gonna have a huge time jump. But but why are why are people wondering about whether there might be like a five year gap? Uh, well, Lisa Joy and uh, uh, Jonathan Nolan have uh, said it a few times. Again, that is uh, not like empirical proof that that is for sure what's going to happen, as we've seen in the past. But in the context of these interviews, I, I find it like to be truthful. It seems like it, it'd be kind of like a weird move. Um, also, we need time for uh, this season. Uh, no spoilers. I only know what I've seen in like very, you know, bland reviews um, or broad uh that you know it's going to be a lot of the Loris, you know like going and doing corporate and like espionage espionage and like you know like taking on the the, the system and the man and it's like so she has to get herself set up so like i i just believe it's going to be five years because of the timestamp that was uh on one of the delos uh screens uh from qa that we had at the uh, end of last season which put it it um exactly was it 52 yeah it's 2052 and now it's 2057 i believe so there's that five-year gap it just makes sense because it you know can place our characters in a a, a nice little spot in the story where we don't need to see them getting acclimated so much like you know because it's hard to explain it the lords is like like you know globe trotting and, and and taking on like you know the government in the corporate america uh when she's been there for two weeks but i do think we'll start this episode tonight with the immediate aftermath and then i actually think you'll get a time jump within this episode yeah and they will probably hide it a bit like they have done in the past they, they've said that they're not going to be quite as mind-bending as they had been in say season two but i think we need to take that with a little bit of a pinch of salt they're they're they're, they're going to be doing lots of different narratives and we have to try and uh, piece it together. One thing I just uh, because you said about spoilers uh, if if you're watching this and wondering what my approach to spoilers is in these pre-show live streams all the way through the series I'm going to be doing no spoilers um, I'm not intending to see any spoilers or read any spoilers but obviously sometimes they come in front of you but if I even if I do know something uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to share it, so there's going to be no spoilers here, and uh, my moderators know to uh, to zap any spoilers if they appear in the chat as well. So uh, this should be a spoiler-free zone. And what I just said, to be clear, was was put out in press by them. They released oh, it. Yeah, but, yeah, exactly. And when I say spoiler-free, all the pre-publicity stuff, that's yeah. absolutely fair game. And, and stuff that they've put in trailers and all the rest of it, uh, again, a completely fair game. Um, but let's move on to the other character that we know is in the outside world, um, Bernard uh, and Hax. Um, as we go through these characters, I think it becomes slightly more and more uh, hard to say exactly what they're doing because we've had less focus on them in the trailers. But but what's your best understanding of what Bernard is going to be up to during the season? Yeah, so I think that you know we had an interesting line of dialogue between Bernard and Dolores at the end of the season, uh, end of season two, where it was like, you know, you're going to try to stop me. And Dolores is saying that, and she knows this somehow. And she probably knows that because she just built, uh, you know, his entire mind from, from her memory. So, you know, whatever her plan is, she already knows that, and she is already considering why, she, uh, why they would try to stop her, um, you know, because no one knows his mind more intimately than, than her. And, uh, you know, so... Yeah, I don't know. So with that, we have to we have to consider what would Dolores do, um, and if she's you know trying to to take over humanity, then uh, or you know undo humanity. Humanity, I think is is how she put it. And sh and he is trying to stop that. You know, I I think that what he's trying for is is some kind of middle ground, and I think Maeve is also trying for this middle ground of you know we don't need to kill all humans. We don't need to be Bender from Futurama, and and you know make sure it's only robots left, but, uh, you know, we can live uh, peacefully uh, amongst them without them knowing. And I think that, that even Ford, I think that was Ford's original plan with Maeve is that, you know, his legacy would live on this, this creature, um, you know, would live on forever that he created, that he allowed to leave the park. Um, and she did it. Right. So I, I think that that's ultimately what we're going to see from Bernard is that he is trying to stop Dolores from doing the radical thing. Um, and I, I don't think he's going to, I don't think that's going to work. I don't, I don't think that he's going to, you know, die or Dolores is going to die or something like that. Well, Dolores may have, but, um, regardless, I think that, uh, you know, that's, that's what's overall my opinion of it. Um, something I do want to bring up though, is that there's a character that knows what Arnold looked like before, uh, before the, the park opened, before any of the story 
was told that still, assume, assumingly, is alive in the real world, and that's Arnold's first wife. Because after Charlie died, um, you know, and he isolated himself into his work, uh, they they got a divorce. Assumingly, they got a divorce, and now uh, there's this Arnold's house in which they can they can work from. But it but it doesn't change the fact that a character that is built in her ex husband's image is potentially out in the world and may you know expose him if she realizes who that is or or you know something like that. It's just interesting to think about that there's a character that remembers what Arnold looked like and no other character in this in this world would ever know except for her. Yeah, I think I think that's really interesting and I think that the the other element here is that we've been kind of like working on this assumption that they can go undercover and and people, what Dolores can wander around and nobody will know she's a host and all the rest of it and Ditto Bernard uh, there are people who know who they are. Yeah. Uh, William, the man in black, does. At the end of season two, he Dolores even pointed out who he was because you know he he didn't know who uh, who Arnold was. Uh, so he said, "Oh, okay, oh, that's who he is." Uh, so he will know. Uh, similarly, Stubbs, uh, who we know is in this season, he will know who uh, Dolores and Bernard are. So there are some characters out there who are aware of who they are, and. And also, oh, I don't know whether they'll go down that route. Clearly, there were some people who did escape the massacre in in season two. We saw them getting on the boat and going out. They uh, may well recognise, uh, particularly Dolores. Uh, so I don't think they'll go down that route because uh, that would be quite an explore, ex, you know, uh, obscure way to go. But there are uh, there are people who will know who she is. Um, Justin, uh, with Bernard. From the trailers, we saw that um, he did or appeared to go back into the park. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any idea why he might have gone back into the park? Yeah, I mean, the first question is, okay, Insight and Delos, are they, how, how much are they connected? Obviously, there's there's threads there because the technology, um, you know, crosses over. So whether or not they're a competitor or they are a direct uh, connection, um, we have to think, okay, is Bernard going to try to stop Delos? Like, does Bernard, guys, have, like, an issue with Delos as a whole? I, I'm, I'm not saying he loves them, but he doesn't have the hate that, that the rest of the hosts do because, again, he was conditioned. You know, he thought he was a human working for them for years. That's what he knows. Uh, so I think he, he's going to be interested. He He's going to be looking more to salvage and correct rather than to destroy um and i think that's why we go back to the park um uh, the the conduit for that is subs you know because they dropped the host bomb on us so i think that he's going to go back and he's gonna have uh you know questions but he's also gonna be looking for mave uh, i believe but i do think it's interesting just the very idea that people are crafted from others memories because how vastly different would you be from like say a significant other crafting you to like my ex-girlfriend crafting me like none of them are great, but they're going to be vastly different. Um, but yeah, I, I, I th yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, I think that he's going back because he's, uh, you know, again, uh, looking for answers. And that's where I think Insight and Delos, uh, how, how much they're connected um, is really going to be interesting because how do you stop that, right? If William is still a part of Delos, which you brought up earlier, that's like literally that's the, that's, um, Jeff Bezos like running around in an Amazon funded theme park like when because he didn't even like go and do the right thing once it started happening. He like hit out in the park. So that's the worst PR ever whenever. Cowboys and right, he'd be ruined. So if. It's the Delos or he just crushed it by what just happened. So I have to believe there's a degree of separation there. But yeah, I think answers is what Bernard's looking for. Okay, I mean, I think that's quite interesting. I think one thing it's worth noting is that Dolores, and just sort of keep this at the back of your mind, Dolores recreated Bernard in his entirety. So uh, we shouldn't assume that that she just uh, did a completely faithful uh, creation of what was there before. Um, the first time she recreated Arnold as Bernard came to the conclusion that actually there should be a few little imperfections, a few little changes to create this new, you couldn't just create recreate the human. It was just a, a, a slight difference. Uh, so keep in the back of your mind, the idea that she may 
have tweaked a few things. Um, hmm. She clearly is happy for Bernard to be there and to sort of uh, oppose her. I think this is one of the most enigmatic things that happened at the end of last season is that if she is set on destroying humanity, why on earth would she recreate then somebody who th who would be useful uh, only after she's done all of that, which was what she basically seemed to say, you know, we will need both of us to survive in order for, in the, in the long run for it all to work. There must be some kind of plan there. There must be some kind of thinking going on. There must be a reason why she brought him back, not just because she kind of likes him or anything like that. She knows that he will try and stop her and something within that dynamic, something in the act of her creating him, there was a plan. And I think we're going to try and discover or we will discover what that plan was through season eight. Yeah. Um, Okay, let's let's sort of talk more broadly about the outside world before we get on to uh, the other two main characters, William and, and Maeve. So, uh, where where do you think then Charlotte is going to fit in, or whoever the character who is Charlotte? Clearly, she's doing some kind of infiltration job. What what do you think? Um, I'll just I'll come to you first this time. What do you think she is? Uh, she's actually doing what's her arc and i say her as i say we don't know who it is in the charlotte hale body but what do you think what do you think is going to happen well i think it's uh, it's really going to be set up just as we've been kind of uh you know speculating about that it is going to be if it's not uh literally maybe uh based off the uh, a former child you know uh with charlie like some of that's going around it's for sure a host that we've been um we've been they've showcased this host and the little bit of footage we have as being an adolescent to uh, to a large extent so sending an adolescent into harm's way you know because uh, dolores has got that utilitarian approach that you know uh things is a very um uh dynamic and uh you know entertaining uh way to tell a story you know it's a lot of risk it's uh like you know they have to take care of her but she also is in the body of the person that can get into Delos, that can get into these corporate um, offices, that can get into these databases. So it's like, I would think that that's a pretty damn good story to tell is one where you're not, you, you know, at night you might be coddling them. You might be trying to teach them how the world works. And let's face it, Dolores was out a few times before. She doesn't know how the world works, you know? Um, like, I wouldn't say she's, I mean, she knows how Westworld, in all fairness, you know what I mean? Like a few trips out uh, don't really give you the best idea. So she's learning that she goes to, so I think that's a good reason for the five year jump. But I think it's a, a compelling story to have to put that those who you love, who who maybe, you know, are a little immature and, and definitely inexperienced into harm's way. So, yeah. And and I, somebody in the chat was saying one, one of us said season eight rather than season three. Uh, clearly thinking about Game of Thrones still. But um, uh, closer. 35F saying there are at least three robot factions and two human factions. Human versus robot is too simplistic. I think that I would agree with completely in the second half of that. I mean, I, I wouldn't num wouldn't be confident enough to number the amount of factions yet, but we're not yeah. seeing a hosts versus humans straight battle here. Yeah. Uh, we we've already seen you know what uh, what is it, presumably a human trying to get uh, a host Maeve to attack another host Dolores, and it's going to start getting complicated. Um, how do you see uh, hacks building on what Justin was saying there, but also this kind of like slightly more complex uh, network of people with different de desires and, 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 and aims? How do you see that all kind of fitting together in the outside world? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. So I think there's, I think there's, uh, you know, humanity that that wishes to 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 be, uh, you know, still the the dominant force of the world, and I think that that's probably the majority. I think that we might see a change in William actually as they as he comes to, you know, possibly be a good character this season, uh, being his own faction. I think that Bernard and and Maeve align the most. I think that. You know, again, that peaceful coexistence without them, you know, being oppressed is exactly what they want. And I think that at least from the get go, Dolores is, you know, her own bull in a china shop trying to be the best uh, and and and, uh, you know, make sure that there is nothing in that that could ever oppress her again by by killing everybody. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I go ahead. 
somebody uh, in the chat was putting, you know, that like uh, maybe I'm reading a lot into like the trailers and let trust me, I don't look that much into promotional material, but I think it's fair to say that Dolores is a mother figure to whichever host these are in adolescent and in, in saying things like a child that we have to also remember, yes, I'm using that vernacular, but I'm using that because that's what we know. Like they aren't like us. So like they do, they grow, you know, we, we dealt with grown hosts um, yeah. that we would look at as grown human beings um, act in childlike ways in the last two seasons. So all I'm saying is whoever this is with Dolores, it has nothing to do with them spooning. I don't assume it's a kid because they're spooning or something like that. It just seems that she has a protective uh, nature and, and she has to take the lead. She is the leader. So she is a mother figure to them. In some ways, there is an episode called The Mother of Exiles uh, you know, coming up. So I just think that that's the way to go. But you guys are absolutely right. Don't read too much in the trailers. It's usually the worst thing you can do. Yeah. Yeah. So Go, go ahead. The um, so Justin, I think something I heard you say earlier. Um, are we working under the assumption that that Charlie Bernard's child is in in this? I am not, but many oh, okay. people are. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, um, so uh, can I throw one other thing into this kind of mix of what Dolores might be up to and what's happening in the outside world? So in at the end of season two. Uh, I, I watched the finale of season two literally just a, a few hours ago, so it's very fresh in my mind. If you remember, there was this uh, the, the library when they were in the forge, there was this sort of library of all of the what they called the coding of humans, all of the, the people who the guests who'd been in the park. And that much was made of the fact that for humans, actually, we're, we're very simple creatures, we're not as complicated as, as uh, you might think that we are. Um, and uh, Dolores spends some time flicking through some of the books, looking at them. She picked up one on Carl Strand, and, and that obviously helped her in the, the finale, understanding how he would react and all the rest of it. Do you think they're going to pick up on that? Because that was that was all about a competitive advantage. Ford was wanting her to have some sort of competitive advantage, or otherwise she would fail in the outside world. Do you think that that is going to have any sort of hangover? Is there, are there any particular people that she might have been reading about that uh, uh, it's going to be important. I, should, you. I think she should have spent a lot. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, yeah. So, I, you know, it could very well be that it is uh, a handful of people. And I think that we'll probably get at least one more person that, you know, that she read up on. Because it, when, when it plays, when the scene plays out, it doesn't seem like they're there forever. And she is just, you know, loading as much information and as much inf and people into her mind as possible. Um, I think that maybe there's one or two that she's just able to read so well, or maybe they're, they're going to introduce a, uh, another board member that she can, you know, emulate perfectly. And it also kind of comes in with this data, you know, Dolores absorbed this data. And so whoever is in that hail body at the end, that's trying this corporate corporate espionage. Uh, I mean, it's not crazy to think that's also Dolores at the time because she needs that information. Otherwise it's, you know, why did we, why did we use that at all? Why was that in there at all? Um, you know, so I, I think it might speak to who's in, in her body, but I think what I took from that and what I think ultimately that is the more useful thing is that it taught her how to read humanity. It taught her, you know, from a very nihilistic approach that humanity is, is very simple, is very predictable and deterministic and, you know, can be read, can be manipulated and so on and so forth. Um, and, you know, that would ultimately let her survive no matter who she was dealing with. It also would help insight thrive. That's where the connection is. What is insight doing? Putting, using parameters within an algorithm, like I spoke about before, you put, get put in the box parameters. That is the information that insight would be using. Our Delos, we know that Delos, again, insight doesn't necessarily have to be a, a directly connected with uh, Delos. It could be competitors, uh, but we do know that they had, uh, uh, you know, uh, that they were data mining as well. So those books, yes, they could help Dolores. I, I, I hated how she was only in that library for like two minutes and they asked if she read it all. She's like, I read enough. I'm like, why don't you sit back down for 10 more minutes to make you sure read a little bit more. Yeah, yeah the there's everybody is in here and she's like, uh, yeah. Uh, um, Short Circuit was a good movie where he could go through everything yeah. really quick. She didn't even yeah. do that. But anyways, yeah, I think that insight is your connection to that. That That's your uh, you know segue right there that just, it's leads to where the next stage in the technology that we're uh, exploring. Yeah, the, uh, the there was a uh, 
uh, on Twitter, there was a, a promotional material that that came out and said that uh, Westworld, uh, HBO, like their their uh, their Twitter page was now being run by Insights. And I found the phrasing really interesting, like uh, to say that maybe they're foreshadowing that Insight purchases Delos or purchases Westworld from Delos, or you know something like that. Because we do know that the park exists. We know that you know potentially. Delos is going to take a hit because, um, you know, so many people did just die, but the park still exists after all of that. So it's either, you know, Delos is this super giant connected organization that can just cover everything up, which I think is possible. Um, or, you know, they get, they get bought out by somebody else and years down the line, the park reopens and, and, you know, then there's, I don't know, cause there's this whole separation of this because no one knew about this data being collected, which means that, uh, potentially insight wouldn't know. But I also want to stop myself from saying that because we do have an interaction between Ford um, when uh, Teresa died. You know, Stubbs is documenting how previously competitors have tried to get information out of the park before. So, you know, in, insight may be that company that's existed this whole time trying uh, trying to, to get this IP. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that that has to be our working assumption. Yeah. Is that that they're not, uh, they're not a uh, just a, another bit of Delos. Uh, they are another organization which have been doing things in the outside world, um, and they are a competitor of sorts in the data business. Um, and they've perhaps been trying to do some industrial espionage until we learn a little bit more, because we don't know about the outside world. We have to be honest about this. We haven't been told uh, about how all of this operates. So until we know more. They're a separate organization who are in the data business and they are in the business of of managing people's lives uh, and that is, is is as far as we can probably go with it um we did have a super chat from vigstable saying boy ford um not quite sure what is what the question is there that's presumably reference to uh, ford created uh it, slightly weird way he created a, a boy version of himself um uh and sort of and his his family from when he was young um i don't think we're gonna see him out in the real world i don't think that dolores is going to bring uh boy ford out with her in any way um i suspect that that's largely the ford story uh, done with now. Uh, I mean, I'm, that doesn't mean we're not going to get a cameo from Anthony Hopkins because, you know, if you've got a chance to have a cameo from yeah, Anthony Hopkins, yeah. then you probably should. Uh, but uh, I think that as a story arc, taking him up to the point where uh, he has manufactured the hosts going into the world uh, and he has made his exit. Uh, and, and in a actually quite touching way on the beach with Bernard and all the rest of it, the, the two, uh, Bernard being Arnold, the uh, or re or representation of Arnold, but the two people who started all of this coming to terms one with another, um, I think that worked really well as an arc. So um, we may see Ford again, but I don't think that he's now, he's not the main man running things anymore. Yeah. Also, um, just jump in there. Uh, young Ford yeah. was... Uh um a gift from arnold and it was just, yeah 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 um just as i uh tend to do uh in my live streams roughly halfway through just to take a very brief moment just to let people know things that are happening on my channel um westworld obviously is going to be uh where i am at uh, spending a lot of my attention uh over the next eight, eight weeks these uh live streams will happen every week uh five o'clock eastern standard time that's nine o'clock uh, UK time, it will later be 10 o'clock when our clocks change. Um, uh, that will happen every Sunday, every Monday, I will be doing a breakdown of that episode. Uh, every Tuesday, I'm hoping to be doing a trailer breakdown or another video. And then I'm gonna carry on doing, if you, uh, if you are into Lord of the Rings or A Song of Ice and Fire, I'm gonna carry on doing those videos as well all the way through the season. So that's what I'm about and my normal Thursday live streams. So I'm going to be a busy boy uh, during the next uh, eight weeks, but uh, uh, a lot of focus on Westworld and the normal content will also continue. But these two fine gentlemen, uh, as I say, they've both got uh, channels of their own and will be producing content. So uh, 
Justin, first, uh, what are you what are you going to be doing during West World season? Well, you can catch us tonight after the show. This is your pre-show, and we got the after show. My esteemed co-host right there, Hacks Dogma. Uh, we did it last year for every episode but one. Uh, we will do all eight this year uh, before the dust settles. Uh, right after uh, the Westworld goes off air, we foolishly go on air, and we're like, this is what's going on. We got it. We nailed it. Uh, no, it's a lot of fun. So we got um, me, Hacks, Johnny Bragg as our behavioral tech uh, that's going to be working with the chat and, and, and uh, cultivating uh, conversation and so forth. And we have a, a great list of guests tonight. I'm so happy to have Gray Area on for the first time talking about Westworld. She's been a fan of it. Um, I think a lot of people are excited to see if uh, she's going to fall back in love with season three. because I, I think that's where a lot of us are. So the after show, one video a week and um, then just doing videos like my channel does uh trying to explore more than one particular television show but westworld is my thing i love westworld and i will do episodic reviews on it it's uh i, I give in that one so uh yeah the 10 o'clock 10 15 10 30 eastern tonight uh catch us live on my channel yep Excellent. and uh, um hacks how about you yeah um yeah please you know be, be sure to check out the after show um, I'll be doing a live show with Robert as, as much as, as he wants me on here. Um, each week I'll be doing um, a episode review each week. And then if a certain theory comes out, um, you know, kind of that, that really stands out, that need its, needs its own lens to look through, uh, I'll also be doing videos on those. Um, again, for the eight, next eight weeks, I'm also, also teaming up with uh, Azura Hype and... Um, uh the episode club uh and again those those videos and those live streams will be announced on on twitter uh whenever those you know do come out so uh be sure to check me out on uh twitter and uh youtube thank you excellent and the only other thing that i tend to say uh is that i only have people on here if i would recommend uh, their their channels personally and i would highly recommend you check out both of these channels and say if you're watching live there's uh links in the chat if you're watching this a little bit later there'll be a link down in the description uh, and also patrons thank you i always say thank you to my patrons i simply cannot do what i do without your support so uh thank you so much um if you're interested in becoming a patron either just to support the channel or because you want access to some stuff i do just for my patrons again there's a link down in the description if you're interested in that but let's get back to uh, westworld season three. Oh, actually we did have a quick uh super chat vinstable uh saying here's to the lady in the white shoes oh, she doesn't which, have the cherry uh, which is uh, which is a, a toast uh, from early in, season one. Uh, it's an inappropriate toast for a wedding. Uh, I was a wedding DJ for a long time. You don't do that toast, but yeah. Well, yeah. well there you go. Did it have a, uh, a a deeper meaning in season yes. one? Yes. Sure well, no. It, other than it's just an old stain. I, 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 the deeper meaning, I, I won't get in. It's your channel, so I don't know how vulgar you want to get. <laughs> Let, let's let's steer clear of the vulgar for the sake yeah. of demonetization. Yeah. Um, okay, let's uh, let's have a talk then about a couple of the uh, the other characters that we've got. Um, we talked about uh, Dolores and we've talked about Bernard. Let's talk about Maeve. So um, again, we've not got huge amounts about her, but we do see her again. So she obviously does get brought back, uh, presumably by Felix and Sylvester. And she appears, it seems, first of all, in... Um, uh, World War Two world or world it's or, Italy it's during, yeah, yeah. It's, it's Italy so somewhere yes. during Second World War which presumably is a, another park uh, with resistance and Nazis and all the rest of it um, so uh, let's uh, Haxi will do you first what do you why do you think she's there well I mean she's presumably still super powerful but why be still in the park you know I, I think that, that Felix and Sylvester do their job I think that um uh, you know, she she gets recommissioned. She she stays alive. I don't think that she is maybe conscious or, you know, she very well could be, and she could be just biding her time until, you know, she is once again able to to escape. Um, but I think a lot of time passes here. So if she is conscious through that entire thing, uh, from you know this her now being dead on the beach to her being rebuilt and then playing this new narrative, um, I think a lot of time passes, and and she is you know, either not there at all. She's, you know, been nerfed as I see in the chat or she is, she is conscious through this whole thing. Both, both routes I could see. 
Um, you know, but but the idea of this park still being in existence and this park still being used, uh, you know, after this this horrid incident happened, you know, I think it it kind of points to this idea that Delos covers it up, right? Because, you know, who would go to a park that, uh, you know, every, all, all the humans that are supposed to be safe die in. Uh, and I think that that, that is uh, pretty interesting. I don't know, I because Hector's also there, right? So, yeah, I guess there's not really too much that we can can deduce from this point. I think that she's probably not conscious through this, and Bernard is maybe on a mission to then get back to her, but that's all speculation. Yeah, and then she seems to, I, and I think I would broadly agree that she she gets rebooted in some way, appears to be in the park. I, as I, say, I think it is a mystery why the park is still up and running. The, the idea that there was some sort of cover-up is probably the best working hypothesis we've got right now, but we don't know. Um, but after that, there does seem to be this... Um, she gets out of the park somehow, and she seems to be made an offer that she can't refuse or something along those lines by this new character. Uh, Justin, I'll go to you for your interpretation of this. Uh, I think it was Vincent Castle uh, who basically says, I want you to go and kill Dolores. So what's going on there? Why Why is she being hired to kill Dolores? What's what, Will she try and kill Dolores? What do you reckon? Well, okay, so let's start at the beginning. We have the uh, the Nazi occupied. Um, it's so one of the episode is called the Winter Line, which is uh, all the fortifications and strongholds that uh, Nazi Germany held uh, during uh, World War II in Italy. My father, grandfather, fought at Monte Cassino and all that. So it's a uh, very interesting. She's definitely in um, Italy at the time. The way I'm looking at this is, if you wanted somebody to do something for you. And you had somebody also that acted up per se. Listen, guys, I'm not on Delos' side, but let's look at it from their perspective. They're not going to reward the host that, like, you know, started controlling and everything with the mesh. Uh, um, what is it? The mesh system. Hacks, you're the tech guy. Um, oh, the back door. Mesh network, wasn't it? Mesh network, yeah. Mesh network. Yeah, you, they're not. So what you you do is put them in a really uh, precarious situation, They're like one of the worst of worst. What's worse than Nazis? Not really nothing. So, you know, they put her there. They make it so it's hell. And then they take her out. It's pretty much like putting somebody in solitary and be like, OK, you can do this if you do this for me. Because, again, Maeve, why would Maeve be listening to this guy to go kill Dolores? And why does this guy want Dolores killed? Is he working for Delos? Is this somebody uh, we haven't met yet? Or is he working for the competition? And what would what would re realistically be a motivation for Maeve to go get Dolores, especially for somebody else? My argument is Maeve has always embraced the shadows, meaning the park and what's in it. And I think there's something to be said for wanting to stick around the park and make things better for those hosts that are in there. Because like you guys said, I mean, I don't know. I wish I had that type of business luck. I don't know how that business is still working. Uh, you know, there's been multiple incidents, but uh, that's what's happening. So if she has come to the conclusion and she's a realist, and she's like, this park's going to keep happening. Maybe I'll broker a deal to get the inmates better treatment. Uh, because she has always embraced the park. And I think it's an interesting take. Dolores is trying to change the world, the outside world. Maeve's trying to save those that are still stuck within, you know, because she doesn't necessarily look at it as being stuck within, right? Uh, in some ways, she she doesn't, uh, you know, necessarily go with the thesis that it's not real. It's uh, she she embraces the shadow. So it's 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 speculation but i think it's an interesting take on it and it definitely doesn't make sense for Maeve just to be like a lackey for somebody that makes no sense yeah i mean i, th I think motivation is the key thing here um we have to ask ourselves in fact before i talk about that i was i've just been multitasking. twitter flashed up that you did, didn't actually in in your plug you didn't actually name your podcast guys do do one of you want to just quickly say what the name of your podcast is the 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 after show yeah, yeah. oh <laughs> before the dust settles before the dust settles, and it's it's on Justin's channel, I think. Yes, on Top Shop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. excellent. Okay, um, That's the motivation. Just just, just tidying up for everyone, anyone who who was wondering what that is. Uh, um, uh, so it's on Top Shelf fandom uh, after after the show finishes, basically. Yes. Uh, now, as I, said, I was talking about motivation, so Maeve, uh, her motivation in season one was reasonably clear. She was trying to figure out what on earth was going on uh, and, and then she was trying to get out of the park and then at the very last minute she kind of changed her mind because she had this burning desire to uh, to go get her daughter. 
season two, that was the big drive that was taking all the way through was to to find her daughter. And then um, at the end, she was trying to make sure that she could escape. So she, uh, season three will have to see another motivation here in some way. So this is the, the, the two questions I have, uh, hacks you can answer one or both of them, is what possible motivation could somebody have, a mysterious Vincent Castle figure have, for trying to kill Dolores? And what motivation could Maeve have for potentially saying yes? So <clears throat> I think if, if uh, Vincent Castle is, is trying to kill Dolores, then he's doing it because, assuming that he is running the Insight Company, uh, I think you know it, he's doing it because she, she is a threat to him and she needs to be taken out and he believes for whatever reason and it may be as you know simple as he's a, a trillionaire that just wishes to see robots kill each other in the real world or it may have more depth than that but um you know that that he could be doing this to to stop dolores from stopping him and <clears throat> i think that mave mm, i don't know i think i think that there's probably no way that mave does this without something without um you know uh her being forced to or her bring her being programmed to I, I don't see their goals ever aligning assuming again that this person is the leader of insight um because i mean there's no reason that 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 uh, mave would want to support the leader of this company who is you know turning humanity into drones unless yeah i, I just don't see that so their goals definitely don't align. I think the only way that it really works is if Maeve then comes to some reason that Dolores needs to die on her own. And I don't think we have anything to support why why they would want to stop that. Aside from Maeve just wants to wants a peaceful existence and Dolores is trying to, you know, kill all humanity. But yeah, I don't and they know. They do have her daughter in the park. And, and like you said, Hex, have we ever seen Maeve in a negotiation get steamrolled? No, she is quite the businesswoman. She is formidable in every single sense. So she doesn't get rolled over. But her daughter is her cornerstone. And her daughter is a huge motivation. If Dolores is making things back, so we have to remember, too, it's not just actions that we've seen Dolores make. We're probably are going to see that time jump. It's actions that are taking place in this season that yeah. have already taken place. She's causing problems for somebody. So let's say you got problems being caused by a host, you cause problems for the host that you have control over. And that includes Maeve's daughter. They don't have her daughter though. Maeve, Maeve's daughter's in the in the Valley Beyond. She put, yeah, she put her in the Valley Beyond, but maybe they could promise to bring her back or so forth or, you know, make her or something. I'm just saying she is tied to host. So I that's mean, a I, motivation for her. Yeah, I, I, th I think I'm with the idea that I don't think they will rein back the the uh, the sublime, the, the Valley Beyond uh idea that that's been pushed off somewhere by dolores uh and and those people are now gone and because um the cradle got destroyed then the backups are gone as well so um effectively they're having to sort of reboot uh everybody yeah. um uh and indeed perhaps even create new uh characters new hosts and all the rest of it now um so uh i've lost my train of thought there um oh, yeah, uh, oh, yeah Maeve so Maeve f for me the only thing that I can see that has been kind of like a um a running narrative that may start turning into a motivation is this desire for people to have free will to make their own choices that was something that came out particularly in season two when she was like going through and uh and and when she went over to um uh shogun world and all the rest of it this idea that people should be able to make their their own choices in life so uh she may well feel that if they if the park is back up and running that she still has a role to do some kind of freeing up of the hosts there and if she does come out into the real world then she may well also feel that uh if, if Dolores is being painted as somebody who's just there trying to destroy everyone, that she may not want, or she may want to oppose that. But I would agree, I don't think it's going to be as simple as she gets asked to go off and kill Dolores and she says, oh yeah, okay, I'll go and do that. Yeah. She will have her own reasons for, for, for doing stuff and will probably get some sort of exact, some sort of 
price for it. Um, in, that. Dolores is the only one that knows what the location of uh, the Valley Beyond. So, you know, uh, her having agency over where her daughter is, I'm aware, and thank you for reminding me, Hacks, but again, let's remember that Maeve might not be too keen on Dolores being the only one that knows that location. So extracting information could be possible as well. It's very true. Uh, very yeah. true. And, and again, like I love, uh, Robert, you reminded me that, you know, Maeve's a big factor for Maeve is this, this idea that, you know, the choice is important, you know, that she allowed the hosts uh, that, that she met at Shogun to not come with her uh, because they wanted to be where, uh, you know, the, the Clementine equivalent just, just passed away at her, where her soul was, um, you know, so the idea that Dolores could somehow be preventing hosts from, from having their own control over their life or something, um, you know, and, and again, I mean, you, like what she did with Teddy, right? She made hosts work for her because it was convenient and, and you very much made herself a villain, in my opinion, um, you know, because she stole that choice from them. So I, I definitely could see some room for, for her to naturally get there. But I think that, yeah, Dolores is going to have to do something that, that really, really is really is really bad or detrimental to other hosts uh, if, if that is the case. And I don't really see that happening. So, yeah. Yeah, and it's possible that uh, that Bernard might be going back in to, to get her. Yeah. Um, this might be the reason why he goes back in. I, I mean, I struggle to think of a reason. What, if if his now main motivation is to stop Dolores in some way, you have to ask why would he go back into the parks? Uh, there was sort of like a, a line in one of the trailers where they're sort of talking over stuff and usually it's very easy to take these things out of context because they deliberately don't put the, the, the line of dialogue with the, the pictures that come, should come with it. Uh, but he talks about I'm coming in or I'm going there to, to get uh, the one person who can help or something like that. And Maeve could be that one person who could help. So I think it's possible that he goes to try and uh, extract uh, Maeve. Um, just on a very quick point, a couple of people in the chat were asking whether I was going to do a season two overview because I did a season one overview and I haven't done a season two overview. These two fine gentlemen have both done uh, overviews of seasons one and two, so I'd highly recommend you go and check them out. I will uh, do a season two um, uh, overview. Obviously, it would have been better if I'd done it before the season, uh, but uh, I will I will try and drop it. I've I've basically written it, but just haven't recorded it yet. So I will try and get that up at some point in, in the next week or so, um, if anyone still needs to have a sort of a bit of a catch up. Um, OK, so I think that's uh, that's roughly Maeve done. Um, we, we've started uh, uh, talking a bit about William. Uh, the man in black. Now, Hacks, you had this idea that I, I really like the idea that he might be in prison or perhaps some kind of uh, even a mental asylum, I think, is is, is, is possible because uh, he's um, he, he's dressed all in white. Uh, they seem to be. It really reminded me kind of like a clockwork orange kind of image when they were like in, in the trailer when they're sort of putting stuff into his mouth and all the rest of it. And he has been on this huge... Uh, sort of journey to the point where he was considering suicide. Uh, he was cutting himself open, wondering whether he was really who he thought he was. There's an, a very real possibility that that his mental health, well, it clearly has declined quite a lot, like and that, that yeah. might continue into season two. So it might be that it, he's in prison. It might be that he's being held in some kind of facility, uh, ostensibly to help him, but uh, but perhaps. Uh, to protect him from himself. Oh, um, that, uh, just, sorry, if I could jump in real quick. Yeah, go. That would be so, so terrible for William. I think 100% you just nailed it on the head there because William's character, like there's a lot of reasons to believe that he was coming there to kill himself uh, in, in season two. Like he was just done. Uh, he wanted to burn it to the ground. He wasn't leaving this place. He had no intention to leave this place. Like, <clears throat> and... and all of that stemmed from this idea that a machine, you know, classified him, and it classified him so poorly. Uh, it, it showed who he really was, and he, and he defied that. So imagine now that he has killed his daughter in what could probably just be described as a schizophrenic episode. You know, I mean, 
yeah, that would be the worst thing that William could ever go through. And I think 100% that, that his mental health is going to be put full full on display and and it will be a humiliating thing for him. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think you got it. I think that's perfect. Awesome. Um, uh, I'll come to you in just a moment, Justin, with your thoughts on uh, William. But we did have a super chat. I just want to pick up before we before we forget what we we're saying with Maeve. Uh, Donald Peoples, hi, great to uh, great to see you, and thank you so much for the super chat. Saying, I think with Maeve's experiences with Felix and Lee, she will know that not all humans are like the park guests, and she will see the changes Caleb will make in Dolores, and they will team up by season's end. Now I'll I'll start this, but I'll, I'll throw this to these guys. But I, I think one thing I would say from my rewatch of season two was the the Lee Sizemore. I didn't really like it too much the first time uh, I, I watched it, but looking back at it, he does grow hugely due, through that season uh, to the point where at the end he is sacrificing himself in order to save Maeve and Maeve's loved ones. Uh, and they do show that she clocks that, she sees that, and she is actually quite emotional about the fact that, that he went and did that. Um, so uh, I don't think they're going to be dropping that. I think that she will be very aware, particularly as I said with Felix and Sylvester, that they're not, they're not all bad. So she is going to be very much in this uh, mood of not wanting necessarily to just kill all the humans. Um, does that logic then follow through as Donald suggests that um, she will see change in Dolores again? We, we saw that in season two hints that Dolores can change. That that means that they will team up at the end in, in trying to uh, help this revolution or whatever it is that's going to be going on. Either of you want to pick up on pardon me. Either of you want to pick up on that? Yeah, I, I think it's clear that, you know, one of the major themes and messages of the story is just the ability to, to make choices and be aware that you're able to have agency over your life. So, you know, she puts, you know, the humans through the rainer in season two, Maeve does, and she she uh, objectifies them with making Lee, you know, change in front of her, just like at that, uh, like she has had to do so many times. And it's walking in another's shoes. And this, again, is continuing on with a different type of artificial intelligence, uh, you know, with predictive technology and so forth. But again, it's the same general idea. It's about making choices, people, and the ability to you to be aware that you have agency over your life and not let others take that away from you, whether it's because you're a host that was built for this, you know, park that's pretty terrible uh, morally and ethically, but, you know, are you're an outside world and, uh, you know, uh, slowly but surely Alexa starts running your life. So I think it, it fits perfectly. And I don't think she's going to be, she has no reason to be killing all humans. Humans are, have kept her alive. And, you know, again, like I said, uh, yeah, sorry, I did misspeak about Mabe's daughter, but that is Mabe's motivation. Yeah, Genetic. so, oh, sorry, Justin, you were just cutting out for a moment there, so I'll just throw over to, to Hax. Oh, yeah. Uh, sorry, I was lost in the, lost in the history, I thought. Um, <laughs> no, that's not a problem. Yeah, the, um, could you just remind me, where, where were we? I was speaking about Maeve's motivation for her daughter. She's not likely to be turning against the humans. Uh, and even though her daughter's Maybe gone. Goes. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. That is it, her main know. motivation. That is what drives her. So, again, I wouldn't rule out her wanting to get her back, even if she is in the Valley, which she is in the Valley Beyond. So, yeah. So, I think that um, I think that Maeve and Dolores could definitely team up. And I think that, like, the, the few shots of them from the trailer that we've seen are, are this, you know, combative, you know, go get her. She has a sword for whatever reason. Uh, it, and she meets Dolores on this bridge who has a gun. And we don't see them fight. We do see Dolores fighting in that same scene uh, with the same clothes on, the, the assuming humans that are that are on her other side. So it's meant to lead us to this, you know, combative between the two. But I don't know. I don't, I don't think that, that we'll really get that in... And if we do, I don't really know why we would. Um, just well, yet. there was there was one bit in, uh, and it's always dangerous to overanalyze trailers. I I, I say that knowing full well yeah. that's what we all do. But um, uh, there was also what looked like Dolores a little bit later in the scene with 
uh, an arm chopped off um, yeah, with very clean cut, which is what would happen if somebody cut you with a katana, which is what yeah, it yeah, must yeah. be um, uh, Maeve carrying. So uh, maybe that doesn't necessarily mean that they were fighting it. Maybe the katana went to somebody else. Who knows? But they're, 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 that's certainly where they're trying to draw us towards is this idea that there is yeah. some kind of uh, fight. And if... Uh, well, wow, just Justin's. I'm just saying, you got an issue with somebody bringing a sword. Justin's buddy? got got the sword for all the haters. Yeah, okay. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, uh, the, and it Respectful. does appear that Maeve did literally bring a sword to a gunfight there, which I find uh, highly amusing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, so they are they are suggesting that, and I can see it possible uh, that if she does get extract some kind of a, agreement that something she wants will happen if she goes and kills Dolores, then I could imagine that that might be something that she'll be going for. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, if 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 they can prove to oh, I think you just nailed it, dude. If if they can if they can convince Maeve that Dolores has this information of where the cradle is and you know make her believe that they would get that information from her and then bring the hosts back including her child and akichita then wow man i think that 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 would probably do you think that's what i was thing. trying to get at that's what i was do, trying do to get it with that, my though that that she would want to bring her child back because she she has it, it looks to me like she's sort of given out she's that she's got a new mother now and yes uh she has got that personal connection, but do you sure. think that that if it feels almost selfish yeah, in a way yeah. to say that I'm I'm wanting to take you back from this person who you've now got this mother daughter connection with? Is that oh. do you do we think that that's likely? Well, when Fuck. when she I made the decision oh, though, Robert, when she made that decision, that think about the circumstances that she was in she was in they were about to all get wiped out that's what she thought she made the decision it was just like, like an escape pod right it wasn't like she made the decision on a nice sunny day to send her off to the, the valley beyond no it was everything was going to hell and she sent her daughter to safety because that was the only uh you know viable safe passage that there was so like i don't think that that decision was made um in circumstances that we could like say that that is definitely the way that she feels like she wanted her there for sure i do agree that like it is a selfish move but you know, that's if if, if you want to be uh you know get that sapien hood, that's that's a good quality that humans have. We're very very selfish. So, um, yeah, I would just say that it's it, you know those were some uh, circumstances that were out of the norm, even for Westworld. I think that I mean, no, go go ahead, Hex. I don't think that she would. I mean, I think that I think at one point Maeve would have. I think that you know when she when I keep when she's when she goes to her daughter, sees this new mother, it's like that moment of heartbreak, like, oh, I've been replaced. This person isn't, you know, is nothing to me, essentially. Um, or, or I mean nothing to her, uh, essentially. And, you know, until the point in which she wakes up and assuming that she would ever wake up and and, and become, um, you know, alive, then then the, she may pick this, this new mother and, you know, may would uh, essentially still be nothing to her. But uh yeah i think that if Maeve was going to do the selfish thing and, and pull her out and make her her daughter again then <clears throat> then i think that we wouldn't have had that scene before where she had uh that moment of realization that that you know because she does the selfish thing she doesn't try to protect the, the mother and the daughter she she sees the uh native americans running in ghost nation coming uh, about to kill everybody and she takes the daughter and runs you know she, uh, how do you feel that the Valley Beyond is characterized, though? It does seem like, I mean, Dolores for sure uh, downs on it. She is not up, uh, in for it whatsoever. So it's not really posed as like the perfect uh, afterlife. It's kind of posed as a prison in a way. So I don't, I would, I would argue it's not necessarily, yes, it, that, that's a happy ending. Yeah. So I would, I would say there's enough reason to doubt it because they didn't sell yeah. it to us. Yes and no, although this was the thing that Dolores explicitly said she changed her mind on. Mm -hmm. So she was going to just effectively say, no, that's, yeah, this is just another gilded cage, shut it down, let not do it all. But then after she came back, after, um, effectively after Bernard brought her back, 
then she changed her mind and she put Teddy into it as well. So it seemed that she'd come to some kind of understanding and she hid it so that nobody else could get it. So it seems that she changed her mind away from, yes, she probably still thought it was, but she thought, okay, for those people, perhaps that's what they need and want. But she was pitched and sold on it on them making the decision, them having agency. That Her opinion of it didn't change, but the methodology, you know what I mean? Not letting them choose is what swayed her. So mm -hmm. she let yeah, them make the she decision. She didn't let Teddy choose, did she? Yeah. Well, she's Dolores, but she was sold. <laughs> she was sold on, you know, why are you making this decision for them? This isn't your place. That's what Bernard was saying to her. So I think that's what swayed her. It's like, well, if they want to go to this shithole, they can go. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, like, so I think it is. I, I think it is entirely a reality, right? So, like, if we could create um, uh, the Valley Beyond right now, and if we could theoretically map the human consciousness to be a true fidelis, uh, you know, mapping of, of who we are, not even having it uploaded to a real another body. Imagine if we could just go to this programmed heaven, right? Because essentially, that's what it would be. We could continue living in this thing, um, you know, and and, and exist and it would be the, the true afterlife that, that, you know, we would know for sure 100% exists. And I mean, I think that that would, I think that a lot of people would choose to do that. Uh, you know, I think that that would still be a reality and they would still be themselves. It would just be, you know, at the mercy of whoever is managing that, that server, you know, because again, it's still, it's still data on a medium. It still, you know, could just be un unplugged and everybody killed, but, yeah, uh, if it's that or death right now, I think everyone's going to choose the Valley Beyond. Which was the same yeah. situation. I think we could all yeah. agree um, nobody wants Dolores with their finger on the button. Can we just get to that, 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 that we'd say she's not the best person to be in charge of where the Valley Beyond is? Well, whether whether she is or isn't, she she did it. <laughs> so I think, well, I think we now. just have to take that. So there'd be a reason to try to change it. that, though, is what I'm getting uh, at. Yeah. Um, Maura Lee, thank you so much for the, the super chat saying enjoying the live stream and the great discussion. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Maura. I really appreciate that. And then uh, Shade of the Evening, uh, thank you so much, saying thoughts on Dolores using her older build? Oh, this is a good question. Oh, yeah. uh, so in the trailer, one of the trailers, there are so many trailers, uh, then we see, uh, we've already talked about uh, what it seems to happen is that Dolores, she... Uh, her initial plan doesn't quite go right. Maybe she gets beaten up or something like that, and, and Caleb comes to rescue her um, or, or happens to be there, or something along those lines. And then we cut to this scene where you get him and her, and she seems to be having a rebuild, but her um, endoskeleton, I think that's the way it is, uh, is that... It's the old style one. It's the kind of the mechanical one. For those who are sort of aren't up on the lore of Westworld, there was an upgrade part way through this. Is that they started out with all the hosts, you sort of cut them and their their sort of wires and metal and all the rest of it. But then they upgraded them to be more organic. Yes, there were still plug points and all the rest of it, but they were more organic. So but Dolores, when she has this kind of a rebuild or when she the the outer shell of her is gone seems to be this old school uh version of herself so why is that hacks hacks you 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 <clears throat> go oh yes when i sort of started talking about well, this have you got a theory on this i do yeah so i think that you know this proves that 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 she uh, she loses an early fight uh relies on on caleb to, to rebuild her um you know something of, of that measure but like what I find more interesting, or I'm sorry. So I think that that body, first of all, is coming from potentially Arnold's house. You know, Arnold has proved that, that he has the, the means in which uh, he can 3D print new bodies. I don't think it's, well, actually, I think maybe I just killed my own argument there. Um, it's, not, <laughs> it's not better though. It's important to know they upgraded for price and it's more organic, but it's not better. The old structure is stronger and better. The new one is more appealing to who? Not them, humans. Yeah, It's so, not an upgrade. Yeah, and I wholeheartedly agree. And I, and, and I pointed this out in, uh, I think the trailer breakdown video, but uh, that point and the idea that it might even be um, an identity thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, Dolores is very much 
very much trying to, to be her own thing. So if, if these bodies were built in the image of, of humanity, she may resent that body and knows that, you know, a carbon fiber exoskeleton body that's just has, you know, human covering, uh, I don't even know what you call that, just fake skin on her, right? Uh, mm. You know, would, would be efficient uh, or much more efficient than the just flesh and blood that, that she was previously built with. Yeah, I mean, the, in, the, in the chat, uh, Philip PLC has come up with, I mean, the, the sort of the Occam's razor solution to this, which is that the, uh, the, the duplicator in Arnold's house would be old style. So perhaps it's simply that what was being built, yeah. that it was one of the old models of, of building it rather than the newer ones, that's true. which is possible because we don't know. We don't know what that is. So that's that's the simple answer. And it may just be that. Uh, I mean, I love I love the idea that this is some kind of like point of principle on Dolores's part, not to be organic, but to be yeah. more mechanical. Uh, I, I don't know. I, it, the, the, the simple answer is that we don't know yet, uh, but that is, uh, and it might just be that it makes a good visual, so they just went with that rather yeah, than that definitely plays a big role. But if I could um, jump in now that we're talking about Arnold's house, on my last rewatch, I noticed something that I've never noticed before is when Delor I'm sorry, when uh, Ford and Bernard are in the cradle together and he's discussing, hey, you know, sorry, you're just you're not cruel enough of a of a being to to make this out alive. I, I need to to put myself inside you <laughs> and uh, and and make you pull the trigger. Um, the there's there's a scene where the windows start uh, closing like as if it's like a um, you know, a bunker. Lockdown, yeah. yeah, as if like Arnold's house, and I, and I bring this up because I think Arnold's house may be a huge point in this season and how, and how they are able to, uh, you know, get back into the real world and be safe for a time being. I think that we might see that Arnold's house was built as, you know, kind of a, a stronghold, a, a, a bunker of sorts. Um, and I think that another reason that that's important is that Dolores sends this information, this, this package to somewhere that's super safe that no one would ever find. And I mean, Arnold's house has been sitting there for, you know, who knows how long untouched. And there's some reason to believe it may be this this bunker. Um, and I think so the, made it, the data may just strictly be there. Yeah, it's it's possible. It is it's very possible. I mean, I like the idea that this is some kind of bunker because basically this was and and Ford himself was was the idea was that this could be the home base for them. And so he didn't just want something that people just randomly walk in. It's got big, high, thick walls and all the rest of it as well. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's a definite possibility. Can I bring us on to uh, thinking about episode one now and sort of like what we might expect? I mean, we've been talking about the season broadly as a whole, um, but season one now... Season one, sorry, not season one, episode one, um, uh, has they've released the the titles of the episodes, uh, and I've decided this this season I'm going to carry on my ignominious tradition of of butchering the names of every single episode. Um, uh, this this one is called uh, Pache Domine, um, which uh, I. I had to Google this, uh, but uh, this is the the first line from uh, uh, some Catholic chanting that you might use in a, a, hymn. Um, a hymn, as, as you like, that says, "Spare, Lord, your people; be not angry with us forever." Mm -hmm. So uh, let's speculate about episode one. Uh, Justin, why don't we go to you first? Uh, I either pick up on the episode title if you want to or or more broadly what you think we can be expecting from yeah in two and a half hours or whatever it is yeah it's from joel i think 217 and it's used during lent a lot time of repent you know so um mm. it and we also have a title called mother of exodus and the colossus all of those have to do with immigration um exiles and so forth uh in this whole idea of the new gods remember her whole uh big speech the man in black when she went ozymandias on him so you know it plays into that so i think it's you know they're they're very clever with naming there i love how you do that too with your videos mm. uh so those names are always uh nice to break down but i think the first episode will show a uh a very in control Dolores just running rough shot at first through, uh, you know, these um, various different uh, institutions and, um, you know, uh, the, the, both, you know, the government and uh, privatized because I think she's on the war path. And then I think we are going to um, obviously be introduced to the human half of everything. 
and that, that'll be Caleb with with his people, and we'll see his plight. We'll see him back from war. We'll see why he feels like he is on the outside. Why, you know, like, what, why is he being wronged? What, what is going on with this society that is not fair, not only for Dolores and the host, but these humans, as you guys have spoken about before. So, you know, we'll see the connection there. And then um, I think from there, they'll hatch a plan. We'll get to see Westworld. We'll get to see War World, I believe, this uh, um, episode, at least a, a little bit of it. And uh, we'll get an idea of where everybody's at and what everybody's been doing. And, and that's what you do. You establish uh, where, where everybody's at. You, and, you, and you let them know what they're trying to do and uh, what's going against them. So, I mean, uh, kind of a very simplistic breakdown, but that will be what happened. You know, I mean, it's going to be, hey, what are you doing? Where are you at? What's stopping you? And yeah. uh, it's, it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. And I usually don't say stuff like that, but it, it looks like it's going to be a fun season. I'm excited. Hex, any thoughts? Yeah, I I'm mean, entirely or I, I agree entirely. Uh, I do think we'll see War World. I think that we'll see a very prosperous Dolores, very comfortable um, doing her thing, executing a plan that she is confident in. Um, <clears throat> I think that at the end of this episode, we might see that fail or maybe see some of the things that that lead Caleb into um, maybe needing Dolores or, or you know, some of the shortcomings of, of Caleb, why this character is... Uh, you know, not content with his life or something like that, that really leads him into, in, into her arms. Um, I think that that's very possible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, guys, just so you know, we're probably got about another quarter of an hour or so to go. So now is a good time for you to be dropping questions into the chat. We'll try and pick up on as many of them as we can in the, the last little segment of this. Um, in terms of my take on episode one, I think the, the guys have got it exactly right. This is a, a setting the scene kind of episode. Um, I think we're probably going to have more focus on the outside world. I think that we'll, we'll see that through Dolores. I think we'll see it through Caleb. I imagine that we'll have um, the beginnings of Arnold trying to figure out what he's going to do how is he going to keep try and keep tabs on dolores because that's yeah that's the first thing if he's trying to stop her he needs to figure out what she's doing um and i i hope that we get the 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 wider world of of what is all this algorithmic determinism and what's what's actually uh going on there so that we can see this i mean i I agree we may well see a little bit of uh, Maeve, but it wouldn't surprise me if it's just a, uh, you know, a, a scene or two here or there just to, to re-establish that she is still alive, as it were. Um, and I think we're going to have a lot of focus on the, the real world. Yeah, and, and with that, like, um, I think that the only reason we might not see Maeve is that <clears throat> they like to separate the episodes with, like, um, you know, these lead characters, right? So, like, in in season one, it was like, you know, all all the all of, all of the present characters, and then episode two was Logan and William's story, right? Uh, and then in season two, it was, uh, um, I forget. It, but yeah, just the just the idea that like they're building because there are so many characters still left and and such a story to connect that this first episode might just strictly deal with Caleb and Dolores, and then episode two dives uh, much deeper into Maeve's story so they can kind of like keep all of that together in its own in its own thing yeah when they're yeah. in close vicinity to each other it's an issue we saw that a lot in season two there's a really great video about it being broken down about the ensemble cast and the issue with it because you know at the end of the day Dolores is the main protagonist that drives your narrative uh, it, even though I love Maeve's storyline it probably is my favorite but they have to keep them separate so I think distance is an ally here actually that we'll be able to get more of their storylines in both episodes because they're not you know geographically close to each other so you because when they get together you have to force conflict right and you have to then write your way out of that conflict because it can't happen yet so that's we saw watch season two people i mean you see a lot of cases where it's like well i guess we uh, don't agree on anything but we will be walking away they're like yes we will and they just slowly back away because that can't happen yet so it's like yeah keep them apart uh this uh, you know physically uh for now because they have different ideologies it's important to uh you know, explore. But I do like about the algorithmic determinism. How do you guys think they're going to depict that on screen with like a montage of everything that's happening throughout a day? Like, you know, how we went through the loops of Dolores. Do you think we'll have a Caleb mirror waking up? I would love yeah. to see that. Be interesting. Yeah. 
it wouldn't surprise me at all if they if they do like almost a cold opening with with Caleb and like going through his statement mm-hmm. as the as one of I can't remember whether it was the first trailer but one of the first couple of trailers was effectively him um, and it wouldn't surprise me if that if we see him going through a day and seeing how this new world impacts on him and his choices and all the rest of it yeah so yeah, but talking of Caleb, why don't we pick up a couple of people I've, I've been seeing in the chat have been talking about him. Uh, Philip PLC was saying Caleb taking the Uber bank robbery jobs. There's, uh, I mean, there are hints that he might be sort of like a criminal. Somebody, I apologies, I can't remember who it was, was speculating perhaps he's not who he seems to be initially. Maybe he is a host or or something like that. Um, uh, go, well, Hacks, why don't we go with you for this one? Do you think that he is who he seems to be? Is there another layer to him going on here? I think it's very possible. I think that um, it, that you know we see him leaning over what is potentially a mother, grandmother, or friend uh, in a hospital bed. You know, desperate. Uh, you know, this it very much builds the story of a character that needs something that they don't have. That you know is is um, you know put in. in it's probably money. Uh, and would align with robbing the banks uh, to to maybe save this family member, uh, and I totally could see that happening if you know Bernie isn't elected. I'm just kidding, <laughs> but uh, the you know the, this idea of of him because before he does that he looks at a screen right he he looks at a screen he's, he scrolls through and he, he clicks like an operation that he wants to do, and it's very possible that organized crime gets to the point where you know they own so much and are so untouchable that that they can just openly put exploits that they want people to do uh, and, and, you know, open source crime. Right. But I think, I don't know. When I first saw this, I thought entirely that it was, that it was, uh, you know, basically the Teddy guide. Like if this was future world, then you would be given a little tablet that shows all the things that you could do. And you could just, you know, thumb through, I want to, you know, uh, uh, do this and that. Right. And, uh, and you wouldn't need Teddy the guide to kind of to to put you through that. So that was my first thought. But if we don't see future world, then yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think that he is he is doing this legitimately, looking for um, you know some kind of help for this for this family member. Yeah, I mean, I think I would say in terms of future. So for those who don't know, there was the original Westworld film had a sequel which was called Future World. Um, uh, it wasn't as successful and it wasn't as good, frankly, uh, but it is, it is there. Now, my take is that they, there's not going to, they're not going to have one of the parks called Future World, but this is effectively going to be a bit of a nod to it because it is, it's a future version of the world. Uh, and they've been very clear, the showrunners, when they've been talking about it, that that's, that's what they've been going for. They're not, they're not going for something that seems way out of reach this is a world that feels like we could almost touch it. It's, it seems a logical progression of, of technology. There's no huge uh, sort of uh, advances and things that make make the world seem, you know, everyone on hoverboards or something. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, so that's my my take on it. Uh, Justin, what, what's your take on Caleb? Do you think he is what? Uh, he seems to be, or do you think that there is some kind of lurking secret? Well, I, I think it's not fair. We haven't been introduced yet. So, you know, uh, I, I think that, you know, in, in order for him to deceive me, I must, you know, be told that he is one way or another. So I think that he is going to be more of um, the, I think we're going to be very uh, sympathetic with uh, his character. He seems to be having everything go for him as far as the little bit that we've got. Um, but yeah, until we meet him, I can't really say, but it would make sense that he just literally is doing this because we have to ask ourselves, is he doing this, these jobs, these crimes because he needs money or is he doing it because he wants to rebel against society? You know what I mean? Is this a, a like a post world war one where the soldiers came back to nothing after, you know, they came back and then they didn't have jobs. So then they used their skill set from the war to make money as gangsters. Is this a, well, like, you know, a story about that? Like, is this a, like, why is this guy doing these things? What is motivating him? Is it money? Is it uh, his his philosophy? Is it you know what I mean? Like it's we don't know a lot about him yet. I think he's going to be a very sympathetic character though. And as far as future world goes, I love a movie that's just totally told through like various news reporters. I mean, it's the best way to give a narrative. It's so terrible. I'm sorry, <laughs> you said it best where you said it exists. 
and you're one of like the kindest people you never say bad things about anything but robert just said it exists so just remember that people if you ever think about watching it the best thing he had to say was it exists technically it, it does exist um, and it, that's, that's what i'm saying it's like the it's, lowest bar it's worth it's worth watching if you're a completionist let's 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 put it like that um, the gray area is in the chat. Hi there, Gray. Great to see you. Um, uh, gray area is going to be guesting on these fine gentlemen's uh, live stream after the show. So uh, if you'd like to uh, to catch her, for those who do not know Gray, she's an excellent YouTuber with a, with a fantastic channel uh, covered Game of Thrones and is now expanding out into a wide variety of other things. Um, uh, so do please go and uh, check out her channel and also check out uh, uh, her guesting on top shelf fandom tonight on before the dust settles guys we're starting to um uh, come to a close here we just got a few more minutes to go um let's just get a, uh, some final thoughts from you both about about the season as a whole going forward what 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 are you most looking forward to or most hoping for or or, or is there like a theory that you've been holding back now you just want to drop it on us before before the season and then astonish us uh, when it comes true uh why don't we go uh justin you go first uh i would say that you know i'm one of those that by the end of season two i was very disappointed because it was a great season up until the conclusion uh it was a lot of deception for deception's sake but i still believe that season one was one of the best series of television ever created I believe this story is a beautiful story, and I think this is going to be a fun season. And I, I do think it's going to be light, meaning it's not going to have that weight that season one had. But I think it will lead us. These eight episodes, I'm hoping, this is being very optimistic, they, they're doing eight for a reason. They know they need to get something is going to happen at the end of this season that is going to drastically change everybody's world, meaning probably like close to an apocalyptic situation, like the, the brink of it. And I think that's why this season is going to be, the season might play more like a Michael Bay movie than it would play like, uh, you know, season one, not Michael Bay, Michael Bay, cause he exists as well. And that's about as good as I can say about him. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you know what I mean? Like, I think that it's, it looks like it's, beautifully shot it looks like it's got the right cast it looks like it's going to reinforce the idea has been reinforcing that we're not different so what better way to do it than through caleb and show because they they've been doing the juxtaposition the whole time uh, with the discussions about why the hosts aren't really human because they're just doing this and that all that does is lay out our pre-programming now we get to see it this is about that this is also about the host journey outside of the world and to make the changes so we sides will you know lines in the sand will be drawn uh, by the end of the season. And I think that we will get back to that, that really um, weighty story, you know, like that, that death that we had in season one by the end of this. And that's what matters. You don't have to have everything be a banner. If this was a movie. You, you got acts that are just sequences of good action. And I think that's what we're going to get. And I think as long as that's what they pose it as, and don't try to make it deep out of nowhere in the last episode, it's, it, it's going to be really, really good. And I'm so excited to have, you know, be, uh, back talking Westworld with you guys, Gray, later. Uh, so honored to have you uh, talk about Westworld first with us. And uh, yeah, I just love talking about Westworld. So I think it's going to be a fun time. And don't be discouraged because of season two, because it's not like the people that are huge fans of it were that thrilled with it. Uh, you're not well, the only I'll one. I'll tell you what, I, I, I rewatched season two just this last week and I loved it even more. I think it was excellent. Uh, so uh, the, some, some fans. I'm just saying it. don't be discouraged. Uh, um, no, no, absolutely. One, one thing I would say, though, I suspect this season, yes, it will probably be quite big on explosions and all the rest of it. But I think that instead of maxing on the philosophy, which is what season one did, or the complex storytelling, which was season two, I think this is more likely to be a critique of where our society is going uh, and, and actually focusing in more on, on civilization and ourselves and technology in a proper old school sci-fi way looking at the near-ish future that that looks as if it might be realistic and then in a blade runnery way and then saying is that where you want us to be heading because that is the way we're heading mm -hmm. i think that's the that's the the kind of feel that i'm expecting from this season uh hacks how about you any uh, any other sort of thoughts about season three where it might be going uh or any other random theories you want to drop on us yeah, I think, uh, you know, Grace said it best when she came into the chat that I really hope Dolores is more Dolores than she is Wyatt. And uh, yeah, uh, <clears throat> like season two, you know, I have some issues with season two. Uh, the the idea that, that um, you know, there, 
essentially what I want is a is a more straightforward plot. You know, I I don't want to overcomplicate it, and I think that that it can be debated whether or not it was it was too hard to follow. You know, to the end of the to the end of the world, right? But I think that because they make it so hard to to follow at times, it alienates a, a portion of the people that could theoretically be watching it with us. Um, and that's essentially what I want. You know, I want people to enjoy the show so I could talk about it with them too. Like, um, and like I have two or three coworkers that have started it and just can't get into it because it's, uh, you know, it's hard to follow or they didn't like what happened in episode one. And I'm like, guys, like tr- it gets better. Trust me. Like it, it's good. Um, and yeah, so essentially, uh, you know, I want a, a much clearer plot. I, uh, I want, uh, you know, Dolores not to be the villain anymore either. I, I would just go out and speculate that the biggest mystery this season will be who Charlotte Hale is. That is going to be the most deception we get. And again, it can have death still. I'm just saying, don't expect season one death. You're never going to get that again, most likely. It was just so perfect. So it's like, it can still be great. You know, I think a lot of people are just discouraged. I, I just advise against that. Give it a chance. Yeah, I mean, I think the who, who is Charlotte Hale, I I would put that as a an episode five or six reveal myself. I don't... I. I if that's the big mystery, uh, then I think that they're they're going, they're underplaying it. I think that the the big mystery is is going to be uh, along the lines of what is Dolores's big plan and how is uh, how how are the other two characters, um, uh, main characters in uh, Bernard and Maeve, how are they going to interact in it? And I think that we're going to see a. Uh, less of the sort of the sleight of hand thing. We, we're definitely going to be seeing lots of different narratives running alongside each other. Maybe not at the same point in time, uh, but uh, yeah, I, they will. As I'm almost sure, as the first two seasons, everything will intersect uh, at episode eight, and, and so everybody's going to be in the same place at the same time. Uh, guys, I'm going to wrap this one up uh, there, uh, but I do want to give uh, these two gentlemen a chance to, uh, to remind us where we can find them on the internet. Uh, so uh, let's go Hacks first on this one. Where where are you on the internet, Hacks? Hey, everybody. Uh, I am on the internet, on Twitter, uh, and on YouTube, and on Patreon. Uh, you can find uh, any of those platforms at, at, at Hacks Dogma. Um, I also have a book that's on Amazon right now, and uh, yeah, if if you guys could just follow me on on here on Twitter, that'd be that'd be great. Excellent. And uh, Justin, uh, how about you? Where are you on the internet? Uh, top shelf fandom, and that's where before the dust settle is. Uh, you can tell I like naming things. So <laughs> um, yeah, before the dust settles uh, with uh, Hex Dogma, and it would be Robert as well. He just refuses to stay up all night to uh, to do the after show. So. Um, yeah, we'll get sad, you there. Sad I'm disgrace s- that I'm not staying up till three thirty in the morning to do a, a couple uh, of hours worth of live stream. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I I feel ashamed of myself sometimes. Well, um, thank you. I, thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm going to make you disappear for just one second, guys, uh, so that I can say if you are watching this a little bit later, uh, in just a moment, appearing somewhere here is going to be a link to my Patreon page. If you're interested in supporting the channel or getting access to some of the stuff I do just for my patrons. Appearing somewhere around here-ish will be a link to all of my other uh, Westworld videos that I've uh, I've been creating. Uh, but guys, uh, thank you so much for the I've really enjoyed having you uh, both on. Fantastic chat, uh, uh, everyone. Thank you so much for the super chats and for the, the excellent conversation. Um, uh, take care, everyone. I will see you uh, on the other side. Uh, on my breakdown will be coming on Monday. So take care, everyone. Don't forget to wash your hands lots. Bye.